All right, welcome back, everyone. Our next speaker is Roland Kiesling, and he is presenting Tracking Down and Making Sense of Associative Locomotion Component in the Toga Lexicon. Okay, there's an article missing, prob probably. Oh, the, uh, but uh, yeah, thank you very much, and thank you for the organizers inviting me. Uh, the central topic of uh, my paper is actually this. It's at the core uh, of a current project conducted at the University of Hamburg. And uh, for clarification, um, please consult one in your handout. I hope everybody can at least look into a handout. I wasn't prepared for so many participants. Uh, mm, and uh, example one illustrates uh, the issue at stake uh, by an opposition of um, the verb sagd to spill versus sagar to spill while moving thither or to move thither spillingly. So one A could be used, for example, for describing the act of women uh, when they pour away the water, uh, which might have entered the house after heavy rains. And uh, you see uh, the verb stem sagd expressing this action. It contains the centrifugal extension. Others call it itiv, uh, which is d. And this indicates that the action is performed uh, with a trajectory away from uh, the deictic center. And in contrast to this, in one, uh, one b describes the action of an agent uh, spilling liquid from containers which uh, he or she might have knocked down over or knocked, knocked over or ex uh, knocked down accidentally in passing, uh, passing away from a deictic uh, center. And the verb stem expressing all this is sagar, um, which is composed of the same bound verb root sag mm, that we find in sagd, plus the extension R that conflates the notions of associated locomotion plus centrifugality. So the semantic essence of the category of associated locomotion is to indicate that uh, the verb action, that is in this case spilling, uh, happens against uh, the background of uh, another motion, co-event, motion co-event with a specific orientation in uh, space, something which has also been uh, referred to as ambulatory, for example. And in a rigid uh, morphological analysis, the suffix R could be, yeah, could be decomposed into two parts. So that is an inner suffix R and an outer suffix R. And the R is a regular allomorph of uh, D, the centrifugal suffix that we have already seen in 1A. Uh, this is actually a peculiarity of Burediga, since indeed in other Datoga varieties, uh, D occurs throughout. Actually, it's an isogloss with, which uh, separates West from East Datoga. Now, the inner uh, suffix R is the crucial part, which adds the notion of an associated locomotion. It also combines with another outer affix, uh, and suffix, which is N, and this expresses centripetality uh, to be seen in 1C, which would then result in uh, the meaning to spill while moving uh, hither, or to move hither spillingly. Now, what you can uh, gather from this um, is that the uh, expression of associated locomotion in Datoga interacts uh, in, with the antonymic extensions for deictic uh, orientation, that's centripetal versus centrifugal direction, and actually uh, a third one, which is not mentioned here, that's the terminative extension. Others call it applicative or something like that, the S, which introduces the semantic uh, role of an endpoint or a goal uh, to, the, to the entire predication frame of the verb. Indeed, the associated locomotion marker, or maybe in shorthand way ALM, um, is not morphotactically independent from these extensions. It never occurs without uh, them. It always needs a specification for deictic orientation or endpoint. And it is not part of the inflectional uh, system, as in other languages, uh, for which the category, uh, the category of associated locomotion has been reported, but it's rather purely uh, derivational 
fairly productive uh, though, but it cannot be applied to any odd uh, verb. There are distributional restrictions depending on the core meaning of the base. It might be fossilized in individual stems and it produces at times uh, unpredictable semantic uh, effects in combination with certain verb roots. And this is basically my uh, program for today to track down the, uh, this associated locomotion component in the Datoga lexicon and to make sense of it in terms of uh, the locus of its assignment in uh, predications which license more than uh, just one participant or one figure, which boils down to the question mm, who or what performs the, this associated uh, locomotion in a given setting. Uh, so the second point is the temporal relation uh, to the basic event encoded in the verb root, uh, which boils down to the question, does the associated locomotion occur before, during, or after uh, the, the center, the core event? And then uh, there are special semantic effects which go beyond the basic notion of adding a simple uh, locomotion event to the predication, and there are puzzles. Uh, we might be able to discuss some of them. For a geographical orientation, a very basic, you all probably know, Datoga is a southern nilotic uh, a dialect cluster. Basically, Alice has... Uh, mm, uh, said everything, we see this, uh, these brownish blobs uh, here, this uh, is a Southern Nilotic Datoga, and um, basically the data that I am using, they are drawn from the Burediga and the Gisamjanga varieties, that is number two and number five uh, on this map, that is we are basically here and here. Before we go into further details, you need to know that the Toga, as most of uh, the Southern Nilotic languages, has quite an elaborate system of verbal derivations. The extensions are predominantly suffixes serving a wide range of functions, that is manipulating valency, for example, uh, giving a spatial orientation, that is the centripetal centrifugal um, markers, uh, adding the notion of locomotion and indicating the plurality of an event. And they combine in a largely fixed order uh, given in this, well, tagmemic ap approximation. Let's uh, look maybe at another striking example in order to see how this works in, a more, in more concrete terms and to expose minimal contrasts with respect to the interaction of the deictic markers. You find uh, in this illustration in four in your handout, which is largely taken from Rotland's um, description. And uh, you see the verbal root lad to cut derives two simple stems marked for deictic orientation in an antonymic uh, fashion, a centripetal stem, lagoon, indicating that something is cut off from a patient, uh, implying that the cutting movements are directed towards a deictic center, while the centrifugal uh, stem, lagged, uh, rather indicates the opposite uh, action away from the uh, motion away from the deictic center. As soon as the marker of associated locomotion is added, things become more complex still. The, uh, the stem with centripetal associated locomotion, Ladian, for example, indicates that the agent uh, is cutting off something from a patient while he or she is moving towards a deictic, a deictic center. And of course, a centrifugal counterpart uh, signals an opposite uh, direction. Uh, deictic orientation. I have corroborated these examples for modern Gisamjanga and for Burediga. As one could see here, uh, the interesting point is that the, the category of associated locomotion allows for a considerable degree of uh, semantic um, complexity or condensation in the lexical items. They denote complex motion events involving two figures 
which are associated with each other. A primary figure that is the agent moving on a trajectory which is defined with respect to a ground or a deictic center while he or she performs another a contained motion of cutting on a secondary uh, figure that is the patient. Uh, so far, uh, ALM has uh, been found to apply productively to verbs which could be categorized for their basic semantics roughly into these uh, groups, uh, contained or stationary motion, including manipulation, uh, perception, communication, uh, posture and position, manner of movement, and even locomotion, that is verbs which uh, already inherently encode locomotion. And this is what I briefly want to uh, discuss or explain in the following by basically by picking some representative examples. Uh, and I start with uh, the contained uh, motion. Uh, it is supposed to refer to motion uh, which is uh, confined to some uh, place involving no locomo locomotion on the side of the primary figure, that is, the primary figure as a whole remains stationary. Uh, from a semantic point of view, it makes sense to subdivide this rather large uh, group into two subgroups, that is, uh, one-figure verbs versus two-figure verbs, or put it uh, syntactically intransitive versus transitive uh, verbs. Uh, in Table 5 in your handout, I have tried to condense the, the meaning in the e English equivalence as much as I could, but it should be obvious from the, from the legend given in the heads of the, the columns in your handout, actually I've uh, forgotten to put it here. Uh, the, these meanings are easily decomposable or deconstructible in their lexical core meaning plus an associated locomotive component. component. So, uh, yam yamad, for example, to wriggle away or to squirm away could transparently be decomposed in its semantic components such as turn over repeatedly while moving away. Uh, and instances, that is the bottom of the table, instances such as to sneak thither and hingad, descend thither, they show that the associated locomotion marker is also found in fossilization, uh, since hypothetical roots such as hing and qual have not been tested so far. Um, I skip this one. Uh, one could also add, for example, zero place or uh, motion verbs, uh, the, the one found uh, is um, rob uh, to, uh, no, no, rob one to rain, which derives the uh, alm stem rob one ar and uh, rob one an. They express mm, the movement of showers or a rainy area as a whole, which could be seen in, s in the examples in six. Mm. Some roots allow for a more fine-grained um, differentiation of degrees in locomotion, as in seven. So we find a verb like quell uh, to jump up, uh, to hop, uh, which uh, derives plain centrifugal and centripetal stems twelled versus twelun, um, single hopping. Uh, move uh, a single hopping move towards or away from a deictic center. So strictly speaking, in this case, locomotion cannot be denied in, uh, in these cases. In contrast, however, the respective uh, derived ALM uh, stems, TWELED and TWELEN, they rather express a prolonged locomotion with uh, many repeated hops in a trajectory away, uh, towards or away from the deictic uh, center. Now, uh, ALM also operates on transitive verbs of contained motion, that is those which provide uh, a predication frame with two uh, figures, an agent who performs some action on a patient, uh, manipulation or ingestion or the like. You see this in eight, uh, table eight. In all these instances, the semantic effect of ALM is quite transparent and straightforward. It adds uh, the locomo uh, lo locomotion to the primary uh, figure.
that is the agent, not the patient, uh, and uh, this added locomotion is concomitant to the core event. So in, in nine, that is uh, the example below here, in nine the agent performs uh, stirring while moving uh, towards or away from a, a deictic center. For example, uh, by striding through stagnant water. Pretty much the same um, constellation of concomitant events could be observed for most communication verbs which are listed in 10 in your handout. Uh, so the example in 11, which is below here, encodes an act of speaking while the speaker performs some locomotion which needs to be specified then again for the deictic orientation, talking while moving or moving while talking. and. Um, in uh, next group experience uh, verbs, we encounter a potentially different situation <coughs> since some experience verbs, uh, perception verbs in this case, incorporate uh, two distinct figures in their predication frame, experiencer and a, a phenomenon uh, that is a perceived participant with animacy and mobility not typically restricted to the experiencer only. So, uh, to place experience verbs such as da to see and yin uh, to hear, they allow for the alm notion to be assigned to the secondary figure, that is the perceived phenomenon instead of the primary figure, the experiencer. Indeed, uh, this seems to be the preferred semantic uh, configuration. So with da, it results in contrasts uh, such as to see someone approaching versus moving away. And this is illustrated in the example in 13 in your handout. The situation here is like this. The experiencer, that is an old man, Guargueda, he is watching some cattle, Duga, moving first. These cattle seem to be moving towards him. Uh, that is uh, then the deictic center. Uh, and that is why we get the marking for centripetal locomotion on the verb dahan. And then all of a sudden, uh, the cattle change their direction. Uh, this is expressed by the verb sajad, to swerve off, derived from saj, to turn something around. And finally, uh, the old man uh, watches the cattle moving away from him, and this is expressed by the centrifugal marker uh, combined with the uh, alm in dahad. So uh, the indication of associated locomotion refers to the phenomenon of perception and not the perceiver. And with yin, that is to hear, uh, we see some special effects in 14. Uh, the centrifugal alm could have two readings uh, indeed, a locomotive or a figurative reading. The straight uh, forward spatial readings are given second in line here uh, because they are indeed uh, secondary. In both cases the figurative mm, readings pertaining to the space of discourse uh, seem to be the preferred primary ones. Uh, so the centrifugal alm in 14a is used to express that the perceived figure moves away from the deictic center in the realm of discourse, uh, droning on and on. And uh, in 14b, the centripetal mm, alm in its figurative extension to discourse space encodes the gradual movement towards touching upon a subject or a topic in conversation. Uh, since in both, both cases the metaphorical reading is the preferred one, another construction is then uh, employed to enforce the locomotive reading and this is done by splitting the clause in two uh, with the alm extension shifted to the ver verb of speaking, balol, and that's, these are the examples below. With, mm, with John, uh, that's to smell, to sniff, uh, another perception verb. The associated locomotion is clearly assigned to the experiencer, not uh, to the perceived, uh, to, to the perceived uh, 
person or animate, which could be seen in 16 in your handout. And this might reflect uh, a cognitive hierarchy in perception, the verbs for distant range perception, selecting the phenomenon as target for the assignment of the ALM uh, marker, whereas proximate range perception uh, verbs targeting the experiencer for this ALM assignment. There's a, a tendency for the so there's a tendency for associated locomotion notion to be assigned to the primary figure, except with perception uh, verbs, which we have seen in to see and to hear. Uh, but these are actually not the only instances. Uh, as long as both primary figure and secondary figure are, anim are animate both options of ALM assignment seem to be available and this is for example as it uh, is attested in with the verb NUNG to allow or to let in 17a uh, the ALM in NUNG WAD is assigned to the secondary figure resulting in the meaning to let someone uh, go away whereas in 17b the ALM in NUNG WAR um, is assigned to the primary uh, figure resulting in the meaning to leave someone behind. The uh, ALM effect in A and B possibly emerges most clearly by contrast to C, uh, which is devoid of explicit locomotion, focusing uh, exclusively on the point of a point of separation to leave somebody in the lurch. Some action verbs mm, allow for assignment of ALM to the secondary figure. These are listed in 18. Uh, I won't go uh, well. Yeah, in, uh, you have an example in uh, some examples in 19a. The central idea of both of both uh, centrifugal ALM stems ngonyad in this case and rabadad. Uh, is uh, that uh, the, the enemies are seized and taken as war captives while they try to run away from the deictic center, uh, which is established by the pursuers. And also in 19b, uh, the notion of locomotion in Hudan to tear off and remove hither is clearly associated with the secondary figure, uh, the contribution of ALM in this case seems to boil down to a conceptual distinction of two events, that is severing the arm, separating it from its trunk, uh, and then removing it from uh, the trunk, that is bringing some distance between the two by pulling it towards a uh, deictic center, which would be needed in this uh, context for the woman to closely inspect uh, the piece she's holding in her hand. The verb um, dub to follow, for example a path or a trail, uh, basically denotes a locomotion of an agent subject with respect to a surface uh, encoded as direct object in 20a and b and the crucial point here is that uh, the second participant takes uh, the ground role and is immobile. And this uh, changes with the verb being extended by the ALM uh, markers in C and D. Uh, it's quite uh, complex again. An agent in subject position is moving with respect to a point of orientation which in itself is also moving. So uh, the, and the entire motion event being uh, oriented towards or away from uh, the deictic center, that is D and C respectively. And this shows uh, that the meaning uh, which is condensed in the English translation equivalent to follow, uh, which looks rather harmless in English or condensed, uh, in Datoga is rather um, is rather broken down into its uh, constituent semantic notions, that is, locomotion of an agent with respect to a target and a locomotion of the target itself. So in order to properly render all these uh, semantic components uh, of, the, of the meaning in, uh, of, a, of a stem such as rubuar in English, 
would uh, be some gloss uh, like move thither following a target which uh, moves in the same direction, something like that. For many situations, indeed, it is quite, uh, comp quite, uh, quite difficult to disentangle the loci of associated locomotion since uh, locomotion of the secondary figure would entail locomotion of the primary figure. So you s what you see in 21A in your handout, the alm in be dead mm, to collect and carry off might refer to both the primary <coughs> figure as Mondea, the person Mondea, and the secondary figure, that is the spears here. In 21b, the locus of associated locomotion is vague since the situation entails both locomotion on behalf of the agents, uh, brings about a spatial distribution of the secondary figure that is meet over various files around. And in 21c, the context shows that both actions, cutting and moving, in La Diade are indeed successive uh, rather than simultaneous. That is, the situation clearly involves cutting up uh, meat in small pieces and removing them for distribution. With respect to the assignment of locomotion, however, it is not uh, clear if the primary figure, that is the agent, is moving around uh, to distribute uh, the strips of meat to various recipients or if he is rather stationary, cutting up the meat while people approach him for receiving their strip. This context would allow indeed for both interpretations, so I don't know. Now, from the examples given and uh, from the example for ex uh, in 19b, you can see another aspect uh, emerging from this, that is the temporal relation which holds between associated locomotion and the core event. The added uh, locomotion might be simultaneous with the primary event or it might follow. At the present stage of knowledge it seems that there are ALM stems which allow for both readings as in the case of La Jad, which we have seen in four in the handout. I won't uh, rush back here now uh, to, to four. Um, it was an example for simultaneous locomotion to cut while moving, uh, while 21C presents the subsequent uh, locomotion reading, that is to cut off and move. And there's another group of verbs which rather, no, uh, I need this, sorry. Um, uh, there's another group of verbs which rather favor uh, or require the arm to uh, be temporarily subsequent to the core event for semantic reasons, uh, that is uh, verbs for confined locomotion, verbs whose inherent locomotive meaning is bound by reference to, uh, to some ground uh, figure, as is the case mm, with now, to pass or to jump over, pass over, to jump over, and uh, nay, to move around an obstacle and uh, some others in 22. Uh, in all these cases, Alm adds the notion of a continued uh, locomotion subsequent to the core event, so denoting um, a complex locomotion with two distinct successive phases. There's, a first, there's first the locomotion event that basically uh, and that, is ba that they basically encode and which is limited to uh, the vector defined in relation to the obstacle. And the added locomotion in the alm uh, suffix, uh, as in neyer and neyen in 22a, uh, they um, show that locomotion is continued after having passed the obstacle. One might um, further assume that uh, verbs with separative meanings such as hudun to tear off hither in 19b and others uh, also have a tendency to favor the subsequent um, association of locomotion. Um, we have seen in, in 14, 
we have seen that ALM might be extended metaphorically to non-spatial domains, discourse, uh, where it uh, denotes a continuation of an event or action, and this is actually part of a larger picture, uh, that is the semantic extension of the centrifugal associated locomotion suffix ad beyond locomotion to encode distributive pluractionality, that is repetitive performance uh, or application of an action to several items distributed across some extended space. Uh, the semantic linkage between associated locomotion or repet and, repeted and the repetitive notion is uh, then or could then be motivated by the fact that the extended locomotion allows for distribution of the action over an extended space with application to a multiplicity of patients or rather the application of uh, manipulations to various patients uh, kind of uh, presupposes uh, locomotion either on the side of the agent or on the side of the patients. So centrifugal locomotion and repetition of multiple applications to different patients typically go hand in hand. And this type of polysemy is illustrated in 23 in your handout with several verbs. So you see, for example, the centrifugal uh, alm lajad uh, derived from laj to cut in 23c, uh, which uh, could evoke uh, the image of an agent cutting various items in various places while moving away from the deictic center. So some, for example, someone clearing a field by cutting trees, bushes and undergrowth, generally following a trajectory uh, heading away from the center. And there are also instances where the ALM marker is uh, restricted to express distributed plur plurectionality because an associated locomotion is, exclu is excluded on semantic grounds. Uh, it might also be important to note that, uh, to note the asymmetry uh, in this semantic specialization since it is restricted to the centrifugal associated locomotion marker. The centripetal marker is not involved here apart from maybe apart from a general uh, tendency towards increasing entropy. Uh, this is possibly so because uh, the deictic uh, center is usually much, mo uh, much uh, more narrowly circumscribed and spatially confined than the external territories of the deictic center. So uh, coming to some type of conclusion, I will skip this one. Um, maybe I, yeah, okay. So uh, we can see that the ALM marker seems to be flexible with respect to its temporal relation to the core event, as well as with this, uh, respect to the assignment to uh, participants. Uh, the only uh, strong constraint is that it never seems to refer to precursive uh, or precedent uh, mm -hmm. uh, locomotion, for there is an, another construction to cover that. Otherwise, the ALM seems to lend itself freely to readings of concomitant or subsequent locomotion, and it could be assigned to uh, the primary or the secondary figure in a situation, eventual preferences have cognitive motivations in that certain uh, associations of events with locomotion are more commonly experienced in everyday life uh, than others. So uh, it is more common for an action such as drawing water in 25 uh, to be associated with subsequent rather than with simultaneous uh, locomotion. And in other cases, mm, we find semantic idiosyncrasies caused by the associated locomotion marker, which seem to reflect the uh, association of an event with locomotion as tied in uh, it's tied to very specific uh, contexts of common experience. So the verb uh, in um, 
what is this 26 uh, there should be 26 in your handout uh, the verb qur mm, to great or to graze or to be gritty derives centrifugal centripetal and terminative arm stems and uh, for example the associated locomo the centrifugal associated locomotive stem qurar uh, means uh, to interrupt a journey thither for sleeping en route or to sleep rough on the road thither and uh, the idiosyncratic uh, semantic addition of the notion of a journey here and its grittiness caused by an uncomfortable interruption in having to sleep en route uh, represents a common frame of uh, reference or common frame of experience and uh, another example, this will be the second uh, to last example, the core meaning of the derivational base robiu, to become straight, uh, derives a causative, uh, which has the same form, to make straight. Uh, and this derives a centrifugal alm robiuar, which means to escort or to walk home, whose meaning could be decomposed into to form a straight line while moving thither. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe I'll leave it at uh, that. Uh, the uh, lesson we can learn from this is these lexicalizations, after all, Im reflect somehow the impact of common experience, again, on language structure in Datoga and on lexicalizations, uh, specifically here. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Roland. Uh, we have time for some questions or comments. Yes? In the beginning, you translated um, into English often with two, in two ways, dealing um, while it could be either associated, the, the background thing could be associated either with the mo movement or with the other thing. Now, sometimes it's important to make it different. Are they, um, is it neutral in principle, or is it is the lexical <coughs> verb really the, the primary information, the other one, the moving the background of it? Yeah, that's, uh, of course, a crucial question, or I don't know an answer to that. Mm -hmm. I, I, had the several, I had the same uh, impression that, uh, yeah, what is the core event and what is the co-event after mm -hmm. all? That is basically your yeah. question, isn't it? And I, well, what is the diagnostics to... I can give you an example. I was in the place, um, and when I arrived, there was a big uh, uh, festival at night. Um, and they were playing the drum. It was a Muslim society, and they, they told me the reason is they had just resolved the question after a long debate whether it was allowed to pray and ride the bicycle at the same time. And the decision was, you could, you could uh, pray while riding the bicycle, but you're not allowed to ride the bicycle while praying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we should be keen to watch out for these uh, uh, prohibitions yeah. and uh, <laughs> use them as a yardstick to uh, <laughs> consider which type of event is central and which yeah. is not. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> was in Kaduri. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yes. Yeah, I was uh, interested by your um, uh, group of verbs of posture verbs, and then yet you skip them. But you have, ex I think, from one of the tables, you have examples of posture verbs with these associated locomotion. Yeah. So, so what, what? would that mean and and how can you get a lexicalization where there is no locomotion as far as i can yeah see. Uh, an example uh, of the posture verbs combined with associated or well compatible yeah with, uh, locom with this arm marker would be uh, to stoop for example, mm -hmm. but I think this is one of those which have not been found in simplex form. I think it was hingad or uh, hing, and to move like that. And uh, uh -huh. another one was uh, 
well to squat, but yeah. uh, it would be difficult to perceive someone or to, to see someone squatting and uh, performing locomotion at the same uh, time. Uh, so I was, I'm not quite sure about the basic semantics of uh, it, whether it was to squat or to stoop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, that is the one, that these are two examples for, uh, for one group. Another one, and I'm not quite, it, it, was, it, it's a, it was a puzzle, but I'm not quite sure. That's why I skipped it here. There are two posture verbs, mm -hmm. uh, very frequent one to uh, to stand and to sit, with seem to contain mm. a marker, a fossilized marker, which looks as if it was the the associated locomotive uh, marker. That is, uh, minad to stand or to come to a standstill, and uh, to uh, what is it, bidad or something like that. Uh, I don't to sit down. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe that's just another suffix which it has not been properly identified. Mm -hmm. uh, can I? Yeah. Oh, yes. um, I, I guess that they are not compulsory in the sense that it is expressive, that you can decide whether you express associated locomotion or not. You is can. That, or yeah, I mean that... If there is the reality is associated locomotion, do you have to express that, or can you just decide that is not central to the thing that I want oh, to? Yeah. No, to I have not tested that systematically, so I can't. But how say. often? My other, my my real question is actually that how how often is it is it used? Um, the evidence from the texts that I have yeah. in narratives, it's not so frequent, but it's also not very infrequent. It occurs. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I would be interested in the I relation. I have no quantitative uh, data at hand now, but that would be an interesting uh, point to see how frequent uh, it is. And I would, yeah, I would be interested in to see how frequent it is used when it could be used. Yeah. And when it is okay. not used, when yeah. it could be used. So exclude the lexicalizations. No ex. Well, you can. I guess you can talk about. Uh, yeah, girls going to collect water yeah. with or without a lo uh, associated locomotion. Yeah. Yeah. So when, it, when it's not yeah. important, yeah. Uh, yeah. the fact that they have to move, you don't have to express it. So whether it. it's enough to just express yeah. the dactic orientation and, and how much pressure it. there is to actually yeah. express it that I cannot say yeah. I have time for one more question yes. um, I was wondering the, the um, associated motion is it always motion let's say that is actively produced by the uh, uh, by the person or could it also be well let's say smoking in a, in a plane or something like that mm -hmm. the in a bus. <laughs> yes, it can. You mean that there's some setting which moves in its entirety exactly. some, somewhere else. Yeah. Yes, that is possible. Yeah. So it's really about the motion and it doesn't matter how the motion yeah. takes place. Okay, all right, thank you very much, Roland. Thank you. Thank you.